The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As we are taking into consideration many aspects of the word of the Lord in exemplifying the fifth phrase of my Christ which you spoke on the cross, I am thirsty, which invokes at present Christendom, a call to the pastor teachers who are occupying the pulpit, who are not aware of the importance of this fifth phrase which not only leaves behind a dynamic impact as a legendary one in this earth, but also calls forth for you to have that legendary impact in the angelic conflict. Because every believer in Christ has been called to show forth the glory of the Lord. We have been ordained in His grace to the praise of His glory. But what is hindering in us and why are we not able to look ourselves that Lord wants us to be looking through His eye? Many people who are occupying the pulpit are either apostates or heretics or some of the men that are exactly like that dog which will return to its own vomit. Not able to understand what is the according manner to be worshipped in the pulpit for the Lord. Not able to realize what is the truth behind this great privilege of opportunity given to us to worship in this unique dispensation of the church age come out to become new spiritual species. That's what Alekeneketesis in Christ. Given such kind of a great privilege for us to understand the truth behind it, that church is a place where truth has to be communicated so that the believers could learn this truth from that place and apply it to their lives. While applying it to their lives, they need to manifest life of Christ in their lives. It is not they, they live now themselves. It is Christ who wants to rule over them, who wants to reign over them, and who wants to live through them in them. That's why we have been covering the doctrine of Trinity indwelling in a believer. But prior to that, some of the things which we need to exhort, particularly to the pastors who are occupying in the pulpit, who do not have the blessedness of the truth, that we have both the individual blessing first, which is absolutely clear when we believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and given a heed of instruction to us, to take very carefully as such how you are going to construct your house. Because the foundation for you, after believing and you becoming a triparite or a trichotomous nature, has an indwelling that God, the Holy Spirit, so that the Shekinah now, which was there in the temple, now indwells in you. And you, not only being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are being indwelled even by God the Father and Lord God, and, and Lord God His Son, that is Lord Jesus Christ. Many of the people, they might have come with tritheism, which we do not comprehend to understand that. Or sabellianism, they express the deity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but they do not believe in their personalities, either to believe in the Trinity or not. And Trinitarianism is one of the greatest doctrines people fail to realize, because the more they neglect to understand the simple concept of the gravity Gravitational, which is the doctrine of the law of the nature, where with gravity you cannot say that there is something like a gravity. It is a law or the doctrine of the nature, which teaches to you about the gravitational. And you call it not as a doctrinal nature of law, but rather you will tell it is a gravitational force. Exactly to understand the entire realm of Bible doctrine of this Trinitarianism, 
is a key where it, it is the teaching mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit for you to guide this truth, to impart this truth, to lead you to the right person when your heart is right to understand this truth. That's why in Jeremiah 3.15, we have the greatest passage of all time. The greatest passage wherewith we have been told, and I shall send you or feed you pastors after my own heart who shall graze you with knowledge and with understanding. And that is what it is lacking in today's Christendom. Because those believers who are there in the pews, they are not interested to take knowledge. And the people are destroying for the lack of knowledge. And the morons have been employed in the churches to preach in the pulpit. Not having a divine bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. Because if he is a really bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, he is a born slave unto Christ. He does not depend upon the committee. He does not depend upon the man. He does not depend on anyone for the survival because he depends upon the master who is Lord God the Father. Because a bond slave cannot provide for himself, it is the master who is going to provide for that bond slave, which is a Greek concept of understanding of the subject. And keeping that in mind, Apostle Paul or any other person who has written the epistles for us, they have been calling themselves as bond slaves unto Christ. And even we are of a special class, if you have that real gift of a bona fide realm to preach the truth, to accurately handle the truth, you yourself are a bond slave. You are a bond slave of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it is He is our master and who is going to provide for us. And this bond slave doesn't refer in a wider sense to all the Christians who believe in Christ. But it refers only to that special class for whom they have been given the gift of preaching and inculcating the truth or disseminating the truth. Why are these people? These are the men that have been sent by God to handle his word accurately, to tell and to build up the church. Not for monetary values. Not for gain so that they order themselves to the lust passion of this world. But rather they are here to be jealous for Lord's truth. And these are the members who need to occupy the pulpit. They are not here working for the sake of their last pattern to be fulfilled. But rather they are here to the praise of the glory of His grace which has been bestowed upon us. That grace which is a bona fide gift, which is a sovereign will of Lord God the Father, given through Lord Jesus Christ for us through the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, that you will be a preacher. And that is what we need to understand, dear brethren. Not so and so morons rising to the core and standing in the pulpit, not even able to understand the mystery doctrine of the church age, not even able to realize what is the corpus for the church age, and what are the epistles particularly in between Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, the doctrinal content of Christology, which is the body of church, or which is the body of Christ. And how you will build up this church, dear brethren. With milk... That's why Apostle Paul was very rude in 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3. He was a rough man in speech in 2 Corinthians like a lion. But in the 1 Corinthians he tells to them, I am not able to speak to you with a mature man. I am still able to speak to you like kids who are desiring sincere milk because you have not grown up for learning Bible doctrine or to discern the truth. That will be a shameful thing for us to realize today. Whenever you go to the church, weekly once assembly, what they're teaching to you? The morality of this world? In fact, even they do not even have the fear of the Lord. They do not even have the reverence towards the sacred things of my Christ to be dealt properly. Either of their pneumatic cast or suki cast, that is the soulish mind or the natural mind or the spiritual mind, though they have been having the tripartite nature in them, having the trichotomous nature, men are becoming more wired and dead to the trichotomous nature and they want to live their lives like enemies in Christ. They work more worst than the people who are dichotomous in nature. In fact, when sometimes when we realize in a country like India, The dichotomy nature really have a reverence to their sacred things which they consider themselves as gods. Sometimes we believers, when we compare to those things, we feel ashamed of ourselves. You know what? When they are entering into their temples, they take bath and they enter. They don't drink and they enter the temple. They keep something sanctity and pure for themselves. And you know what, in my Christendom of country, India, what is happening? A preacher tells, if he doesn't drink and preach, he can never preach in the pulpit. 
And when such kind of a morons are there in pulpits, where is the sanctity for the ministry and the jealousness of his word? And the musician that is playing, he wants to drink, and then only he can play. The musical chords, that's what he says to me. This is the sanctity and the reverence that we give to the true and living Lord. This is not only into the field of this music or preaching, it is into their lives. That's why there is no difference between their carnal mind and the spiritual mind. That's why they will never come even close to understand the truth behind these simple dogmatical subjects given to us to be understood only through the spiritual phenomena. When will they come, dear brethren? At least have a shame of a lesson learned from those unbelievers in a country like India who are sacred, who have a reverence to these useless and worthless idols of this world. And our men have become extravagant. And our men have become extra wisdomized. And you know what? They tell God has given grace more upon me. That's why when I'm drinking and preaching, that nothing is happening to me. Such kind of apathetic conditions are present in today's Christendom. And when will they know what is the order of the pulpit? And when will they revere to the Lord's sacred things? The only sacred thing given for us is Bible doctrine. When Lord has called you to be the temple of the Lord, how much more you need to be understood about the Shekinah which was existing in the Old Testament ritual practices of the tabernacles. The most holy of the holy place. Now indwells in you. No doubt you are such kind of a carnal believer that to God in his grace to respect for the integrity of his imputed righteousness bestow us upon you the life and the blessings. And you know what? You will be waxed of your life in the eternity. The only reason behind that is that you couldn't live a life for or retribution of the blessings for the life that you left, the, left, left here on this earth. You were happy enjoying those things wherein you never even had a worry to understand that if you are not performing or executing the protocol plan of God, if you are not able to realize the unique spiritual life of the church age, that you have been called for Eusabaya and not for Asabaya, which is ungodliness, not having reverence to the sacred things of Christ or for his doctrine or for his word or for his jealousness, you will have a tough time in the heaven where with you will be vexed to understand why I have alone this resurrection body. There is a time in this earth we can change our classes of economy. From a lower class, we may go to the middle and then to the higher and then to the upper higher class. Depending upon our prosperity, as Lord blesses to us. But in the realm of spiritual one, when you are been exit resurrection, either of your death or whichever could occur first. As the judgment seat of Christ when you have been appearing and into this world you did not heed for the glory of the Lord or to learn doctrine or to reach the desperate contract in time as well as for his eternity. You know what? You are yielding only wood and stubble. And such kind of a people are being given only one extension which is known as resurrection body. And they do not have anything to show forth apart from resurrection body in their lives. And they will be waxed of their resurrection body throughout the eternity. They will be regretting themselves the work that they have done, undone and unloved. And departed from this world not having a fear of the Lord. Such is the status quo of today's Christendom pastor teachers. They should learn a lesson from these unbelievers who revere to their sacred things of their gods which are no gods at all. And they are giving such kind of a reverence to their gods and what are we doing? Though we have been given the true and living Lord, though we have been given by faith alone in Christ alone, a life of eternal one bestowed graciously upon us, wherewith we were subjects only for his judgment. But in his grace, Lord has called us, chosen us, and has given us this grace, laviously bestowed upon us so that we might understand the will of the Lord. 
so that now in return we can become the representatives of Christ or we can live Christ through us or we can make a way for Christ to live in us. That's what in simple language we can tell. But what are we doing? We are still turning out to become traitors. We are still turning out to become aliens. We are still turning out to become enemies of Christ. Without doctrine, you cannot do anything. You shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. Satan is a destroyer of the truth right from the beginning. Satan never wants you to know the truth, to understand the truth, to make an effective application of the truth in your lives. That's why it divides your mind. But the key factor is your evolution, dear brethren. You cannot run and tell Satan is behind me, Satan is behind that. Satan never even cares you. Satan is worried about those mature believers who are leading to the truth. But you, you are helping yourself by following into this lost pattern of the sin nature. You are following yourself the weekly programs of the church. You are helping yourself to Satan by not giving doctrine a top priority in your lives. Satan is not after you, but you are after Satan enjoying your fleshly world. And Satan is never bothered about you, dear brethren. If at all Satan would be bothered, it will be bothered about the saints like Apostle Paul. Or the one who is maturing enough to learn Bible doctrine more in depth. It uses strategy against him so that he should stop his growth. He should not know the truth. Because next to lie itself, it is Satan. That's why it reduces you by its prejudiced mind. That's why it makes you to be occupied in these worthless and useless things of this earth. That's why it makes you to be ignorant of doctrine. In fact, when, when there is a person who is there ready to teach you from the original languages of the truth, you know, what does Satan impress you or inspire you? It makes you to become arrogant. It tells to you, who is it to teach you? Are you not aware? How can't you read? How can you character himself? And if even I am preaching, let me preach for Zakir Naik, not for these pastors, maybe the rise of the question for them. But I don't care. I am here to answer my Lord, not you. And it's my duty to reprimand, to correct, to exhort with a rough manner of speech. Whichever manner you take it, that is left to you. But I'm here to tell you, if you put back, until and unless if you don't put back exegesis in the world, in your pulpits, you are burying the mystery doctrine of the church age. You are burying your own escrow contract. You are burying your own spiritual life. Spiritual life means learning doctrine. Spiritual life means not speaking in tongues, or miracles, or healings, or XYZ activities of the church. Or crusader arrogance, or XYZ, whatever you call it. Spiritual life is a unique realm, one wherewith you have been called to show forth the glory of the Lord. And that growth is possible only when you learn Bible doctrine, dear brethren. And how many days you want to eat, neglect it, it is left to you. So the blessings for you is absolutely clear, number one, as an individual, and then as a corporate one when you get married, each being made and kept good by the Spirit of the God. If Lord God, the Holy Spirit, brings your soul to know Christ and to rest on Him and rejoice in Him before God, then you cannot have it all without laboring that others may have the same blessing. This is the way in which Lord brings the two principles together and conciliates them around the person of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For it is not merely that you have as a Savior, but we have also as the head. That's what we need to understand. Yes, the body is one with Him as here so also in Christ. What an ennobling and truly humbling standard of our practice that all we are is a representation of Christ. But we are not able to realize this ennobling and the thing of humbling standard of our practical life. We have been chosen to call and to represent Christ not only as an individual one, but as a corporate one, as an assembly together.
And this assembly being led by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit tells you for being jealous of biblical truth. In Acts chapter 5, a great record of all time, when a man sinned by telling a lie to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, he was dead, like the Ananias and the Sapphire. But in today's Christendom, such kind of a liars are preaching the word of the truth, not even having a gift of a pastor teacher, if they could cross-check deep inside their heart. Because they do not represent the jealousness of Bible doctrine in their lives. Representing falsely, telling them, claiming them about tongues, about miracles, about healings. Telling them that if you have been blessed, that is what it is enough, but you are not able to realize about your spiritual blessings. And they are telling, if you get a good job, if you get a good wife, if you get a good husband, that is blessing from Christ. You know what? In eternity past, to the respect of the integrity which Lord imputes to us for his imputed righteousness, he does it. You not worry about that. The only worry where which you have to be worried is whether you have been growing up in doctrine or not. So while you are learning doctrine, as the Christians in the Antioch have been known, because they have been Christians, the way they used to come and teach and learn doctrine, exactly the church will be the place where people will assemble to learn doctrine. And it is not only as an individual asset, it is for the entire assembly through the corporate witnesses in Christ. Because people will come to know in that way, and how jealous ought we to be, therefore, that every meeting in the assembly should represent the church and Christ in truth. Where is the truth in today's church? Where is Christ in today's pulpit? People are not worried to tell and to edify the body of Christ with the doctrine. People are here like a caretakers. They are not like the genuine parents. That's why the caretakers or 10,000 instructors are there in the churches not able to give to you proper care for the church. There is not even a, enough parent to tell like Apostle Paul that I have begotten you with a traveling pain for me to obtain the church. You know what? Instructors are many, caretakers are many, but the father is only one. So, like a father, you need to take care of the body of Christ, not like an instructor, not like a caretaker. And that is what it is happening in today's Christendom. People are coming to the pulpit like caretakers. People are coming to the pulpit like instructors. And the pastor teacher is burying the truth. That's why if we could find an order of the church, they will assign him for one year or three years or five years to the maximum ten years. And what a minister can do within five, ten years, first of all, if he doesn't know the mystery doctrine of the church age and the responsibility which will be bestowed upon him, if he has a bona fide gift of a pastor teacher upon his shoulders, that he requires his life to be given as a temporary sacrifice and studying like a faithful drudge, digging the truth. By keeping faithfulness in his loins and righteousness in his veins, and having the fear of Jehovah as his only delight, and for a male believer alone, he starts from Genesis 1 1 and ends up with the Revelation 20 to 21 at the end of his journey after 40 to 50 years, daily teaching for them one hour to two hours in a day. That's the responsibility of a pastor teacher, dear brethren. That is the man who could be called as a father for you. Not this silly gilly belly who come around with nampy ampy preachers staying around with one year for his survival of the belly, staying there for three years, and staying there for another five years or ten years, and then quitting the place, and then searching for the new place for new job. That is not the ministry of a pastor teacher at all. The ministry of a pastor teacher is to stick on to answer Acts 20, 28 chapter 26 and 27 verse. Telling that I have declared unto you the entire counsel of the Lord. I have didn't even shun or keep with me or hide with me those things. But rather I have declared unto you, therefore I am pure from your blood. At the same commission given to Jeremiah in 26 2, diminution, not a word. That is the ministry of a past teacher. Can you lay down that to your heart and tell? I have preached at the end of my life. 
from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 and understanding the subject of the concepts very clearly known as through key dispensations. I have expounded the truth. I have exegeted. I have led forth Christ. You know, it's a tough job. Tough job than any other one can have in this world, including the presidents of the so great called client nation, USA. Becoming a pastor teacher is not a joke. It is a divine gift. And it is the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us, who works as a joint partaker, as a joint helper. Mightily, because he is the one who is going to end up that work, because he has begun that good work in us. We are just an instrument. We need to be readily available for him, for his work. But you know for what for we are readily available? We are readily available in the marketplaces to run around up and down to show forth that I am such kind of a great healer, to show forth that I am such kind of a great miracular, to tell that many people came to me, I anointed them with the oil and they were healed. And you know what this pastor teacher teaches to them? The moral basic fundamentals of biblical truth. It doesn't even know what is salvation, either he himself is aware that he's been saved or not. He tells about them the resurrection, wherewith he tells, if he doesn't have the knowledge of resurrection, you're not at all being saved. Once again, you need to be born again. You know, such kind of morons are there in today's Christendom, either I sometimes I think whether they have been called or properly been trained or not. Not able to understand the theological line of systematic theology. Because they do not have the fear of the Lord. Because they do not have their hearts right with the Lord. That is what many people fail and they come to the pulpit. That's why we have 10,000 instructors. That's why we have so many caretakers, but no one has a father to lead you, right from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. And that is the fate of today's Christendom. That's why apostasy is rampant to the core. That's why Satan is raining upon you like anything. Because Satan knew very well it cannot do anything if it is a doctrine that has been held up as top priority. That's why it throws out doctrine from you and from your mind and from your pulpits and helps up other Christian substitutes which are no substitutes at all and which are very, very cheap substitutes if you are following the gimmicks of this world and the traditions of this man. Satan knew very well what it is obscuring from you. Satan knew very well what it is hiding from you, what it is destroying from you. That's why it tells to some people to stand, to stand up as pastors. Whether they have a cross-check in their heart, they really have this bona fide gift of a pastor, teacher or not, they don't check it. But they just go on telling, I have a gift of a pastor, teacher, so I'm preaching. Ten people follow me. Twenty people follow me. And what are your doctrinal tenets? If you could ask, he doesn't even have a word to tell. And in fact, even the infiltration of the foreign theology by the morons, like Christadelphians, Jehovah Witnesses, a Church of Christ, a covenant theology, or southern the Adventists, whatever they have come up with their error of understanding in the infallible and inherent truth, is reigning in Christianity of today's Indian Christendom. Because these idiotic morons who are reckless, senseless, extravagant to the core, not having fear of Jehovah, but having the fear of men and for the fear of their belly and his family, he goes and signs a card with that covenant theology people or Christadelphian people or any other activity which have come up and they tell, if I construct your church in your own place, will you follow it? Will you keep it up a follow? You know what? Not even in the regular Sunday, the churches are being filled. They have just become a ruined state. And every month, this foreigner will send them the money for their survival. And they're happy taking that money and giving them fake reports. Telling that I went to such and such place, I went to such and such town, I went to such and such area of the colony, I found so many people, I have baptized them so much, and sending them fake photos, and making money and money and money. And where is the word of the Lord? Where is the love for Christ? 
Aren't you all morons? Aren't you all traitors? That's why Lord said, I will send your wives to other men. That is a great shame and reproach upon you. And what for you want to come for the church? What for you want to come for the ministry? For the survival of your belly? Even a beggar lives. Even a prostitute woman lives. Even a dog also survives. Ministry is not for money. Ministry is for the glorification of Christ. We need to represent Christ in truth. Because church is a ground and pillar of truth. When you become a prey for such kind of a theological subjects, and rise some foolish people with your own ideas and with your egocentric method, which write them as a psychic manner. You divide the church, you take up a few people with you, and what do you teach them? You feed them again the sincere milk, if it is absolutely right. Or what do you feed them? Mud rather than water? Senseless morons. Not even able to understand what times it takes or how many tough time it is to prepare in the word of the Lord. What it is to search for the accuracy. How much time it will take for you to become a prepared man to preach the word of the truth. Just coming and telling in the night, Lord spoke to me, I'm speaking in a vision. Lord came to me in a dream, I'm telling to you in a dream. Lord spoke to me the prophecy, so I'm telling you the prophecy. The prophetical nuts are being seized in this church age. And even the apostles, they have been seized after the thing of the work which has been done, the completion canon of scriptures. And in a, in, you know, today, in today's Christian, people call as themselves as apostles, people call themselves as prophets, which is satanic to the core, devouring you from biblical truth. You have any gift, it is only a gift of a teaching pastor or teaching shepherd. If there is something that has to be PT, not any other way apart from PT, a pastor teacher. And they are not two, they are one. And these morons can never understand the simple dogmatical truths. Because they have been blinded for the lust patterns of their lives to be fulfilled. He wants their children to be happy, he wants his wife to be happy, he wants to organize some programs and beg money in the place and tell that I have a church and you get me your monthly tithes. Or get me the field fruit, what you have, either it is a rice or any pulses, whatsoever you get it, or cereals. This is the way they are surviving in the Christianity, and that's why there is no representation of Christ, no representation of truth in Christ in the assembly. That's why people can never recognize you as the Christians as they've been found in Antioch. People can never even realize you what you are. Because there the people would realize that the Christian doctrine was being taught. That's why that place was being called as a Christians. And you know what today's churches will be called? Today's churches will be called as fake business points. Business point let out. Or propagating his own idea of theology. Why? They don't come upon their knees to ask Lord what is right, what is wrong. They don't fear Jehovah. They fear the traditions and the rudiments of men. They fear their own belly. They fear their own lust. They fear their own survival in this world. That's why they veneer it or cover it or upcouple it with the form of a tag known as pastor teacher. In fact, even so more on are these people, they tag themselves, I have a marriage license holder pastor. Because if they could marry, they could get some few pieces of bread and for some handful of barley, they are doing it. And that is the truth in the church for the assembly to be taught. And when you are not being trained up properly, how is it that they are going to defend and ask about the counsel of the Lord in Jehovah, such kind of a moron who is rising like extravagant idiot Zakir Mag. When you are not having the jealousness of the Lord, when you are not having the fear of Jehovah, when you are not having that righteousness in your reins to be reigned, what you will show forth, dear brethren? 
Woody and stubble. Or blah blah blah. XYZ, what is speaking to you? Not able to understand. Not able to tell to him that he is a dichotomous nature. He doesn't even know anything about the Christianity. He doesn't even know anything about the spiritual phenomena. Because if it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach you the truth, then there is none who can teach you the truth. That's why men have become dead to the indwelling, controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to rule over them because of their grieving nature and squelching nature for Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Where there is no respect for the teaching of my Holy Spirit, of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling in you, there the people will surely perish. Those men will never come even close to realize what is the truth in Bible doctrine. Such is the nature what we find in Jude chapter 17 verses 18 to 19. That's what Jude 17, 18 and 19 might be the verses. These are the men who have been dead to their Holy Spirit. These are the men who have been inculcated to the lust pattern of the sin nature. That's why they do not have the fear of Jehovah. And such kind of men in today's Christendom are nearly 99.99%. We hardly find 0.1% a man having a gift of a pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of truth. Who sticks to the integrity of Christ. Who stands to the jealousness of the word of my Lord God Almighty. Anywhere you find, you find people compromising for their lives to be survived. And they are compromising for the children to have a good future. They are compromising their wife to be in a good position. But they are never compromising to have the word of the Lord its proper place. That's why church is not been called as an assembly today. Church has, a big, has, church has become a place for a business point. People come with their varied thoughts to be taught. That's why 10,000 instructors are not a proper care for the church. Or one being born as a father will take care of the church. And father alone knows to whom to bestow this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, no matter what or wherever the chips may fall when he preaches. Because he doesn't care the king if he's sitting in the church. He cares for the king of the kings with a conscientious soul so that he can show forth very clearly in a delineating manner what is Bible doctrine to the world. What is the truth in the church you find? Because church is a ground and pillar of biblical truth. And which way you take, dear brethren, that is left to you. If we belong to God's church, what matter about any other church? He is the only church worth contending for. If we are Christians, we are for the truth. And if you are not a Christian, then you are against the truth. And you are a nominal Christian, lying dead to the truth, but a ritualistic person available only for the ritualisms of the Christian activities. And if you are a true Christian, you are there to learn the truth. The truth taught for you exegetically, categorically, and isagogically. So, all we need to see to is that we walk and meet and worship as Lord God the Holy Spirit accordingly leads us. And many of the believers in today's Christendom not even able to realize the truths which is so great and essential for us, a unique privilege given to us to understand these dogmatical truths. People are not able to give heed to themselves. People, in fact, when they are rising speculations to tell whether there is something, a concept known as Trinity, and how is it? It is a Trinity indwells in us. In the tritheism or civilianism, people are been ending up among their own rusted nature of unbelief, not to believe plainly the verbal inspiration of the scriptures, which could be eliminated only under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. No matter how well you might be as a genius, no matter how well you might be thinking of your own selves, if it were not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to illuminate to you under the controlling power of ministry for your God consciousness in your activated human spirit, you can no way come close enough to understand what is this truth. Far less Zakir Lord help him, because 
the more he's trying to fake the things, the more he's leading even the innocent children of Abraham into hell. Because he doesn't know what it is. He is vindicating the ways which are against divine provision. He doesn't even know what is retribution in Christ that we find. But he definitely has a pay to pay for the punishment of not believing in Christ. He doesn't even realize that there is a constant battle between God and Satan. And this angelic conflict never will they come to know. People call it as a gap theory in theological words, but it is maybe a gap theory, but it could be termed very clearly as an angelic conflict. Men do not even come close to realize this terminology, far less they think they could become preachers of the truth, which is so much infallible and inherent, which is both imminent and transcendent, which is both immutable and veracity, which is both omniscient and omnipresent and omnipotent, because of his righteousness, because of his sovereignty, because of his holiness. And what is hindering us, do you know, dear brethren? Our negative volition to learn and to employ this truth. So which way you take, that is left to you. And since the introduction of the tape has been too long, we need to take a prayer today because we are dealing about the indwelling of God the Father in our heart, mind and souls. At the moment of salvation, faith alone in Christ alone, and the indwelling of the Trinity takes into consideration. But one thing which I always admire to tell to you all, give top priority for the controlling power ministry in your lives through rebound. If it doesn't have this process to rebound, know it and learn it, which is very simple, which is 1 John 1 9. Confess your sins directly to God the Father and make it a source of application for it. But people do not want to pay the rebound, but they want to pay the penance. They want to pay the guilt conscious again and again. They are thinking that they can get back in fellowship with Lord only by paying the penance. Only by signing a card that is fake and that is false and that is satanic to the core. God always does everything in a grace provision. God doesn't require anything of you, of your sacrificial nature. God requires only one thing from you, your volution. Your volition to be in fellowship with Christ. Your volition to make your heart right with Christ. Your volition to do top priority for Bible doctrine. Your volition so that you can grow up. In return, you can have a fruit. In return, you can show forth the growth in the field. But people are not interested to learn this truth. And call themselves, they are under Satan. But they themselves are not under Satan, but adhering to Satan. They are coercing themselves to be stick around with Satan by following not grace, but following gimmicks. Because an average minister who doesn't know the original exegesis of the word, or who doesn't even have time to read this exegesis of the word, ignores this word and makes his guilt conscious to be cleared by following some penance, by following some fast, by following some unceasing prayers, which are no prayers at all. Because if it were not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling you, teaching you, training you up, then there is no way, no chance at all. But there is something you can learn it. If it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to tell you that you have been saved by faith alone in Christ alone, because of your positive wake beep signal that you give that you believe in Christ, then there is no way that you shall have this eternal life. If it were not the ministry of the teaching mental power which indwells in you to energize your activated human spirit and tell you about the truth, then there is no way that you can understand or discern the spiritual phenomena. That's why you usually become a trap to satanic cults. That's why you usually become a trap for apostates, for heretic teachings which have been prejudiced in their minds, which have been occupied in their ignorance with the doctrine of demons. That's why they don't want to tell you the truth. 
Satan never wants you to know the truth and what are the true spiritual gifts that you have you will never discern to know until and unless Lord God the Holy Spirit enlightens you in that matter that's why these false preachers who have come up, they tell you it is gift of healings or miracles or tongues. Or until unless you have spoken in tongues, you cannot have the baptism of spirit. Some idiotic moron he tells to me, when I cross check, a demon possession is there for a believer until he's been baptized with the spirit. And what a share out of a say for him to tell that words and blaspheme my character of my Christ. No believer has been possessed by demon. He will have demonic influence through his doctrinal teachings. Because a believer has been indwelt by the Trinity. 1 John 4 4 and 1 John 5 18 is very clear in its talk. Greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. And the one who is in this world is never even able to touch you because you are belonging to the sons of Christ. Because you are a children of God. And what more great emphatic truth we require than simple than to understand the simple truths by faith and by belief. And this moron he further exemplifies telling that I have a power of healing. I have a power to pray. When you have been demon possessed, you will be healed when I pray for you. <laughs> that is the way they are playing gimmicks. That is the way they are dividing the truth. That is the way they're blaspheming my character of my Christ in this earth. They will have the tough time at the retribution for the things they are doing in this life. They will definitely need to answer why and what they have done with each and every breath after believing in Christ. Have they ever come up on once on their knees to have a conscious of genuine humility to tell back to the Lord, Lord, search me diligently, know me, know my heart, know my anxious thoughts, my Lord, see if there is an offensive way, lead me in the way of everlasting, which could be a right and true fellowship with thee. They themselves think they are great preachers. They themselves think they have enough knowledge. They themselves, they think what they are dividing is right, not even having a look at a cross-check for the exegesis or isagogical or categorical study of the subject and try to understand what is the truth behind it and what is the mind of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this concept for us to understand and why is it and how he has penned these words in the original Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic and look into those truths or whether it is a noun or an adjective because in fact even a noun and adjective in Jude chapter 16 makes a difference of the holy myriads which are going to come with Enoch, they include both the saints as well as angels. And the translator may tell to you only as an angel, and they will never come close that there are even saints present there. But there is a slight difference between a noun and an adjective, which makes that how much more you need to be understanding of the truth when you're handling it. Lord never compromises even a minute one which is an error in you and explain you or give you a gratification telling that okay one is error let it go the remaining 99 is right no with lord it is 100 percent it has to be 100 point 100 percent true no way that you can tell it is only 99 percent right and one percent is wrong god never mixes error with the truth a little leaven leavens the whole lump and it is the integrity of the character of Christ. It is his mind that you are dealing. And you know how much more pure you ought to be in handling this truth. No doubt you may have a division with your own family. But you need to stick on to the belief of Bible doctrine. And that is the place of the assembly where people would come to know this truth. And this truth is very simple. A rebound which is not a license to sin but rather it is a license to serve back God the Father a prayer that you can pray when you are out of fellowship and when you come back to your own divine dynasty or when your own divine palace you have been given this great privilege to serve back this great and unique Lord and that is not possible if you are not under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit if this second phase is purely executing work of Lord God the Holy Spirit of your life in this world your phase one is salvation. After salvation, what? That is a great eternal replication question which you need to answer. After salvation, it's your time to learn doctrine, to grow up in doctrine. 
and you know how it is possible for it to done? It could be possible only under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There is no way that you can think you are achieving it. It is only by the way and the teaching method of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which indwells in you. So, you rebound, and in your divine dynosphere, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling your human spirit, takes only doctrine as a nutrient for its growth. It doesn't take or manifest the stupid activities which have been seized after the completion of canon. Many errors have been there regarding tongues, many errors regarding miracles or healings. If there is any miracle or healing today, Lord God the Father directly will perform that to that recipient, not through a mediator at all. Foolishly, this man cannot even understand what is anointing with the oil. They have even vague and stupid answers for that as well. Until and unless you dig the truth, dear brethren, until and unless you search for the truth, you are not a father for the church. You may be one among those instructors, one among those caretakers, because caretakers doesn't have the pain as a pa parents have to their kids. They are just caretakers, that's it. You pay them, they take it. In fact, even some caretakers in other countries like South Africa or Ghana, the people, the way they treat the children really hurts a lot for the parents if they could see really well. They smash them down to the earth. They stample them with their feet and bash them with their rod. That is what it is happening in today's Christendom of the church. Caretakers are not worried. Caretakers are smashing the mystery doctrine of the church and burying in the pulpit. Caretakers are bashing with their miracles or, re or healings or tongues concept in the churches. In fact, even caretakers are trampling the mystery doctrine under their feet. If he is a true father, he knows how to take care. If the kid vomits, he knows how to take care of the congregation. He leads them, he corrects them, and he makes them, and he takes them to a doctor. If he's a true parent. Exactly when a pastor teacher has been appointed in the church, he knows how to handle that church. Because his authority is from Lord God the Father. And as Lord God the Father is worried in his examples of Luke, parable of chapter 15, he searches the one who has been lost with great conscientious soul. And when he has found, he makes a feast that he has found him. That's the care and love of the Father. That's what a pastor teacher will be for the church. He gets them back, he rebounds them, he puts them back into the information of biblical truth. He programs his mind, transformation and renovation of his thinking. He renovates his mind. He tells them the truth so that they could not become a prey again to eat the dust which the pigs used to eat. But he tells them this is the truth, follow it. But the caretakers are not worried because they themselves are eating the pig dust or the fodder of the pigs which they have been fed. That's why they don't care for this congregation. And you know why? They are not the really appointed pastor teachers for the church. That's why they have 10,000 instructors. That's why they have 10,000 caretakers. But there is only one father who shall take care of his kid very well. And that father will be worried of the church and his doctrine more and more to be taught. Because he works more than a drudge. Digging the truth, telling them the truth. Each and every verse has that doctrinal information in the New Testament that it takes more than half of our life to preach the truth. Far less you think within a span of one, three or four days you can read the entire New Testament. Or in fact even within four hours. 
takes minimum 30 to 40 years to tell you and dig the truth and tell the truth. And people never want to apply this in their lives. People always want which is ready-made, which is easy, which is easy-going. They don't want to listen to a doctrine for one hour. They want to listen to doctrine for five to ten minutes. That's it. There ends the matter. And there will be a group, dear brethren. Are you not aware of your spiritual inner man who invels in you? Are you not aware that you're answerable to the inner spirit which is there for you, which will appear on the judgment seat of Christ? That inner spirit man should be strengthened with doctrine alone. No other way, no other means, no other chance, no other exemplification of elevation of a miracle or healing. Only doctrine builds them up. Doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. So to learn doctrine, we need to rebound. And which is a grace provision, and it is also ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If it were not the teaching mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for us to understand these simple dogmatical truths, there is no way that you can come close enough to understand it. Dear brethren, make it a point to understand these dogmatical truths. If you are not able to understand these dogmatical truths, Lord help you. When you do not believe the concept of Trinity, you will never even believe the indwelling of the Trinity. So, with our head bowed and our eyes closed, in the privacy of your soul, we shall have of the using of a privacy of a priesthood to confess our sins and get back and come into the fellowship of the Lord. And we can look today the unveiling of God the Father. And if time permits, tomorrow we shall look the unveiling of Lord Jesus Christ. But our earnest plea is that give top priority for Bible doctrine. Answering Zachary Mike is not a big deal for us. What he is, he's going to end up in the hell. If he doesn't believe in Christ, any member of the human race is going to end up in the hell. Having Christ is your attitude for your eternal life and eternal future. But we, the believers, are we really true believers in Christ? Are we turning out to become a true Christians as the people recognized in the place of Antioch where the doctrine was being taught that these are the men who believed in Christ and they have been turned out as Christians? Are we like that? Or are we just nominal, false, ritualistic Christians? Which way you take, dear brethren, that is left to you. But a simple dogmatical prayer, and then we'll come back and look into the subject. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for the privilege that I given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. As we are going to study the indwelling of God the Father, may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these things, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. But we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. The indwelling of the Trinity is most essential. God resides in the believer. Never before the church age and never afterwards does God indwell every believer's body. At the moment of salvation, Lord God the Father, Lord God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit takes up precedence in the body of the church age believer irrespective of his carnal-minded nature or the way of Sukhika's minded nature. Because now the pneumatic has, that is the spirit, indwells in him. He need to not grieve it nor squelch it, but rather yield to it. But rather give the fruit of the spirit to it. But he needs to take doctrine as top one priority in his life. He needs to understand this truth. He needs to divide this truth. And he needs to get back that information of the truth, which really makes him that effective prayer of all time. That effective prayer to be enlightened to search diligently in his heart, to make his heart right with the Lord, and to have a right and true fellowship with the Lord, so that Lord reveals to him the information, and that information could become an applicable point of view to his life, at the same time it could become an applicable point to the people who are hearing his preaching. Do not compromise with this. You need to know first what you are. You need to know first what is your position in Christ. You need to understand who indwells in you and in your body. If you know that, then you will realize you are sinning against the Lord 
and the way you are yielding your body to this lust pattern of the sin nature to be fulfilled will yield you death. But yielding to the activated human spirit in our body through the controlling power ministry of mentorship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will eventually lead you the fruits or the wages which could be worth for you in righteousness at the judgment seat of Christ. Brethren, if it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is no way that you can come close enough to understand what is the truth in this. That's why I am recording and keeping these tapes for you. Either you listen to it or not, I don't care. Whenever Lord motivates you to listen or to get back into this information, Lord help you to understand the depths of the subject which we have been telling to you. If you are not worth to stay loyal, as Christ stayed loyal to God the Father, then why you are being called as sons of God? God's indwelling continues uninterrupted throughout the believer's life. Scripture documents this unprecedented indwelling. Number one, the indwelling of God the Father in John 14.23, Ephesians 4.6 and 2 John 9. And today we are exemplifying this point. But prior to that, let me give you a review. There is an indwelling of God the Son as well. In John 14.20, John 17.22-23, John 17.26, Romans 8.10, 2 Corinthians 13.5, Galatians 2.20, Colossians 1.27, and 1 John 2, verses 23-24. And the indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is manifested, and many preachers believe in it as well, and the preach as well. But it is when God the Son and God the Father also indwells in us. So Romans 8, 11, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, and 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And how can God indwell a believer's body may be a question. God is omnipresent which involves his immanence and his transcendence. Immanence means his entire essence, which is always present everywhere so that the whole of God is in every place. That is his immanence. And what is transcendence? Means that he is independent of the created universe so that no particular place exclusively contains him. For example, our soul and activated human spirit is not transcendent. It is there in us. After we die, it goes back to the Father. And then it is also placed to abode and the presence of the Lord standing face to face with God, the Father, which is a transcendence. But we do not have this character. Even Satan doesn't have this character. Because Satan is subjected to one place at a time. But God is omnipresent. God is transcendent. No one place can hold him at the same time is immanence. That is, he is always present everywhere so that the whole of God is in every place whenever he is present. That's why he has been called, he has been indwelt in believer's body. So immanence and tran transcendence exist in balance so that the whole earth is full of his glory. He is holy in every point in the universe, while at the same time he is holy and lofty and exalted infinitely beyond the universe as told in Isaiah 6, 1 to 3. If God is everywhere, what is the meaning of his special indwelling of the church age believer's body? That is, the combination of immanence and transcendence means that God is free to be local, to have a presence at a particular location, and since he is not restricted to time and space, he can decide how he wants to dwell in, in this temporal and physical dimensions of our physical body he does not always have to be present in the same sense when he dwells within creation therefore he dwells by his own choice and in a manner of his own choosing his sovereign decision in this matter is a striking expression of his love and his eternal purpose on part of the believers and that privilege has been given for you and me in this unique dispensation of the church age that privilege has not been given to anyone either in any of the church or any other dispensations but only to you that's why you have been turned out as Alex Kinekitesis, new spiritual species in Christ. That's what we have been given, this great unique privilege of all time. But we are not aware of this privilege because you are not aware of understanding the concept of Trinity. Since you fail to understand as such the doctrine of nature of the Lord tells you there is gravitation. Exactly the doctrine of the essence of Lord tells the manifestation of Lord in three parts which is Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and Lord God the Holy Spirit having their individual roles to save this mankind. 
which God the Father planned and God the Son executed and Lord God the Holy Spirit reveals to us. Lord God the Father planned salvation. Lord Jesus Christ completed our salvation once and for all perfectly. Tetelestai in the Greek. Not only our salvation, he has even shown forth our exit resurrection wherewith we shall have this accomplished fact. In fact, even he has given us a gift to each and every believer the spiritual life. This spiritual life is what we need to exemplify, we need to live. And positionally, he has made our place superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And you know, Satan grieves on it. It crushes its teeth on you as a believer. That's why when you're dying sin unto death by not rebounding, by not heeding the first instruction of the Lord telling to you, either by this end you need to recover. That is the first warning. And then you take the second warning till to the point of that a believer need to recover. And if he doesn't even take that second point, and then the third thing ultimately has been handed to the sin unto death. And you know how the way Satan kills? Satan punishes the unbelievers the way he have seen. Tragically, sometimes when you hear the point of that death, you'll be really shocked. That's the way how Satan grudges on them. And when it has been given to a believer for the destruction of his body and soul, it's not a soul because he's been believing in Christ. He really kills him the way you will never be aware of it. You know why? Because you as a believer in Christ are superior positionally than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Satan is under you. But you never want to learn these truths. And you never believe these truths. That's why you become a trap for your own selves in this world. That's why Satan beguiles itself and transforms itself into the angelic light. And blinds you. And blinds you of doctrine. Blinds you of his grace. Blinds you of his love. That's what Satan does to you, dear brethren. You need to be much aware of the simple dogmatical truths. Take heed. A word used more than 40 times in the New Testament for us to understand and be aware of the truth. So, even your spiritual life is an accomplished fact. And that Lord Jesus Christ has exemplified it and gave for us. And he even lived his prototype spiritual life so that we can live now our operational spiritual life. So that we can attain to our spiritual resurrection. So that we can attain to our spiritual maturity in the knowledge of Christ. And in order to attain all these things, it is the only divine agent that is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is going to reveal to us. And that is the essence of Trinity, what you are being given here. It is Lord Jesus Christ who indwells in you at the point of your death. It is he, him, you, who shall see face to face and take him and make you to stand before the presence of the Lord, blameless and spotless. How much worth you are, dear brethren. That's why Lord has told to his disciples, even the entire glory of Solomon's temple will be faded away. And even the flower of the grass will be faded away. It was not even equivalent to that flower of the grass. How much more I will be worried about you. And then he told for us, even your single hair has been counted. That is the grace which Lord has bestowed upon us as we belong to Christ, being born to become the children of God. We have not been born by the flesh of will desire, or the lust pattern of the blood, or the will of the father or mother. We have been born according to the will of God the Father. Will he not be worried about you? That's why he has given you this process, this process of salvation, this process of resurrection, this process of spiritual life. And in fact, even he has given the great agent of all time, God, he himself becoming the Trinity under the controlling power of the of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to control our lives and indwelling in our lives. And you morons want to enjoy your life in this worthless and useless of the vain glory of this earth. So, the physical dimensions, he does not always have to be present in the same, same sense. When he dwells within creation, therefore he dwells by his own choice and in a manner of his own choosing. His sovereign decision in this matter is a striking expression of his love and his eternal purpose. The indwelling of the church age believer's body is God's local presence in a more intimate relationship with the believer than has ever existed prior to his dispensation. God's personal indwelling presence within the Christian's body is an astounding fact and the basis for blessings beyond imagination. 
That's what you will never realize what are the blessings for you given in this church age. So, the indwelling of the Father, which we are going to take, each member of the Trinity has a purpose for residing in the believer's body. The indwelling of the Father is related to the glorification of his protocol plan, as told in Ephesians 1 3, 1 6, and 1 12. The Father is the author of our portfolio of invisible assets. He is the grantor of our astral blessings for time and others for eternity. He is the mastermind of the protocol plan for the church age. He is the designer for the divine dinosphere, the invisible sphere of power in which the protocol plan is executed. The Father is not the revealed member of the Trinity. The Lord Jesus Christ is. The Father is not the divine agent of the believer's execution of the Christian way of life, but the Holy Spirit is. Because God the Father is revealed indirectly through Christ by the power of the Spirit. A little appears in scripture concerning his personal indwelling. The Bible presents only the arresting fact that he does indeed indwell every church age believer. His indwelling guarantees his personal ministry to every believer and his personal ministry through Lord God the Father, that is Lord God the Son, the execution for the agent and the one for the Christian way of life to be executed, the teaching mentor ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And these things we shall continue tomorrow and take in depth to understanding of the subjects. But we shall have one word of flee, but we need to give top priority for Bible doctrine by understanding that we have a great privilege of all time to be indwelt by this unique trinity. And if you fail to believe this trinity, and if you fail to believe this agent of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, revealing to us the spiritual phenomena, then Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. But you becoming a believer in Christ, not executing the true word for which you have been called, for that event, Lord help you. But we are here to tell you again and again a simple dogmatical truth for you. Believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And after believing in Christ, your top, prior top priority is to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit right from the day of your salvation. The indwelling of the Trinity indwells in you and the presence of Lord God the Father, the presence of Lord Jesus Christ for your death to take you face to face before the Lord and the presence of Lord God the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the information about Bible doctrine gives you an instruction to be understood, to make it more sure, to, be ma to make it more authentic and complete revelation that you believe and understand Christ. And you represent Christ in your lives and the assembly of the church becoming the ground and pillar of truth. And since you become the Shekinah glory and you are the pillar of Christ and Christ indwelling in you, now you need to manifest the manifold wisdom of God, which is Bible doctrine. And that's not possible if you waste your time in the useless and worthless things of vain glory of this earth. Only rebound and grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. So tomorrow we shall continue these things. So the closing moments with our head bowed and with our eyes closed have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life and in the privacy of their soul inaudibly when they tell to God the Father that they're believing upon His Son that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. And that eternal life is their own and it is as real as it is and that eternal life is their matched to their very breath they are taking and that's a guaranteed procedure for them because Lord is not a liar Lord is not a man to change his words but rather Lord is a man who will keep his words and he there is no way even his own love can separate from the love of Christ God the Father himself that's what we need to understand when you express your positive volition to believe upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is the moment itself that you shall have this eternal life and which way you go that is left to you because after you having your eternal life, you are being given as now a bond slave and the freeman in Christ. You are being freed from the slavery of sin and death and you have been given eternal life and now you are a bondman for Christ so that in Christ you need to grow up, you need to graduate, you need to learn doctrine and after learning you can represent the glory of Christ to the maximum. So tomorrow we shall look at the subject in depth. So Father, we are grateful for the privilege that you given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us the things that are studied so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.